Thank you and welcome everybody. This is a recorded briefing for the Washington State Military Transition and Readiness Council's Executive Committee and other stakeholders on activities since our last meeting. We understand the Executive Committee members' time is limited, so we provide these recorded pre-briefings to make the most of your time during the meeting. Additionally, there is always some turnover of executive leadership among our partner organizations, so we hope this briefing serves as a helpful primer for our new members. For those of you who don't already know me, my name is Mark Sullivan and I serve as the Planning and Strategy Manager for the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs and as an advisor to the Transition and Readiness Council. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or thoughts, and you can find my contact information at the end of this presentation. So members and other stakeholders will remember that the Council sponsors five different communities of practice that support partner efforts around veteran employment, National Guard and Reserve employment, higher education, apprenticeship and other career connected learning, and entrepreneurship. Staff from our military, federal, state, and private partner organizations meet every other month in each of these groups to share current initiatives and activities, discuss emerging issues, and work on collaborative strategies where appropriate. Members and stakeholders will also remember that the Council has two long-standing strategy work groups focused on one, military spouse employment and career development, and two, credential portability. These work groups also meet every other month to discuss initiatives, issues, and collective strategies. The Executive Committee also endorsed two strategy work groups in 2020, focusing on military family child care and employer outreach and education. Unfortunately, both of these work groups were postponed during the heat of the pandemic. However, with reduction of social distancing restrictions, rebounding of the economy, and hiring of a military spouse liaison at the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs, we've been able to convene the work group on military family child care, and we're currently in the process of convening a work group on employer outreach and education. Now, since the Executive Committee's last meeting, the Council's Communities of Practice and Strategy work groups have continued to meet and collaborate. Factors that have impacted individual and collective strategies include, first, the evolving COVID environment. COVID restrictions have generally decreased and employment opportunities have increased with the availability of vaccines. However, infection rates do continue to spike uh, and that uh, continues to be an, an issue. Also, inflation. Increasing prices for food, fuel, housing, and other costs of living are impacting family choices about employment, re-enlistment and transition, and other economic decisions. And finally, childcare. The availability and affordability of military family childcare continues to escalate as an issue for both military families and military leadership, and Washington State's congressional delegation has expressed a strong interest in the issue. So in response to these emerging and evolving issues and trends, members of the five communities of practice have continued to grow services and discuss opportunities for collaboration. As previously noted, the first community of practice focuses on employment of transitioning service members, veterans, and military family members. Activities in 2021 emerged in fits and starts as employers began hiring, COVID infection rates intermittently subsided and spiked, and many partners return to delivering both live and hybrid virtual services. Uh, moving into 2022, partner organizations staff have continued to collaborate and supporting each other through three primary initiatives. The first is a continuation of commitments to cross-promote partner events and activities on social media to maximize client awareness of employment and related services. The second is a continuation of commitments to share events on WDVA's event website. Uh, WDVA's, the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs events page, has emerged as a well-known central repository for veteran and military family events and activities. And in the past year, WDVA has transitioned the site to a self-service site, making it easier and faster to post events. Finally, partners have committed to convene a new employer development work group, consisting of partner staff who work with and support employers with recruiting, hiring, and retaining military-connected employees. This group will initially focus on sharing partner organization initiatives and strategies, and later they will discuss opportunities for joint and collaborative strategies. The second community of practice on National Guard and Reserve employment has one initiative, which is to produce a virtual employer symposium. Initially, the plan was to produce a series of live regional symposiums based on a successful event in Southwest Washington. However, COVID social distancing restrictions and staffing disruptions delayed that effort. So now the group's plan is to integrate this effort into the next YesVets Employer Recognition and Resource event, tentatively scheduled in September. 
And for those of you who are unfamiliar with YesVets, it is Washington State's campaign to recognize employers who commit to hiring veterans. Uh, currently over 6,000 veterans have been hired through YesVets since 2016. And each year new employers are recognized and provided training at their recognition and resource event. The third community of practice on higher education has focused on three initiatives. The first has been expanding the VI-25 model. For those of you who may not be familiar, VI-25 stands for Veterans Industry Education Within 25 Miles of JBLM. It's a program that was initiated by partners in the early days of the Transition and Readiness Council to connect transitioning service members with short-term work-based certificates prior to separation. Now, while the work group's initial plan was to expand the VI-25 model to communities surrounding other installations, Funding for the program has become unstable, so partners are currently looking for additional sources of funding to shore up the program before looking at expansion to other regions of the state. The second initiative focuses on delivering cultural competency training to new higher education stakeholders. The Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs currently offers a veterans cultural competency training to vet corps program volunteers based on the battle mind to home mind framework. Partners are looking at ways to expand delivery of this program to grow faculty and staff capacity to serve veterans and their military connected family students. Finally, the third initiative focuses on connecting employers with college track veterans. Many employers have expressed interest in connecting with veterans utilizing their GI Bill benefits. Partners are working on developing resources for Yes Vets recognized employers to connect with veterans through campus career offices. The fourth community of practice on apprenticeship and career connected learning is focusing on two initiatives. The first focuses on expanding recruitment of transitioning service members and employers to apprenticeship and related work based learning programs. Initially, this effort focused on outreach for participation in the WorkX internship program hosted by the Thurston Chamber of Commerce and Pack Mountain Workforce Development Council. Uh, most recently, we have also submitted a proposal for a WDVA sponsored Apprenticeship Connect Skills Bridge program through which transitioning service members can be provided navigation and related support to enroll in uh, registered apprenticeship during their transition. The second initiative focuses on developing shared marketing materials. Currently, there are several agency and private organizations producing their own marketing and information materials to encourage participation in registered apprenticeships. Partners have agreed to work together on developing shared materials to encourage veteran and military connected family member uh, enrollment. Finally, the fifth community of practice on entrepreneurship is focusing on two initiatives. The first initiative focuses on creating a directory of business support organizations available to transitioning service members, veterans, and their families. There's been a lot of growth in the network of support organizations and services available to veteran and military connected entrepreneurs. The work group's hope is that a central directory will help our clients quickly and effectively locate the resources they need for their industry and, and region. The second initiative focuses on promoting resources specifically for military spouse owned businesses. Several new programs have emerged in the last few years, specifically targeting support for military spouse entrepreneurs. While there is not yet a federal or state certification for this population, Partners want to get out ahead of the curve and start promoting programs to support the growth and development of military spouse owned businesses. As noted a moment ago, the executive committee has endorsed three areas of strategic focus, including military spouse careers, credential portability and military family child care. All three areas have received substantial attention over the past year with the hiring of a military spouse liaison at WDVA. You have a separate briefing on military spouse related activities, but I'll just briefly share here the initiatives undertaken by the three strategy work groups. The first strategy work group on military spouse careers is working on producing employment related resources for military spouses, producing an employer resource list and expanding outreach to military installations. The second strategy work group on credential portability is working on informing credential portability legislation developing unified information materials on credentialing, and promoting an ask the question effort. And the third strategy work group on military family child care is working on quantifying the real need for military family child care across Washington state, identifying child care staffing needs in military communities, increasing the number of child care slots available to military families, expanding child care fee assistance programs, 
and increasing collaboration across partners inside and outside the gate. Again, this is a new work group that was convened by Olivia Burley, our new military spouse liaison, and they expect to publish a military family child care report in early August. And Olivia will share more information on this in the other recorded briefing. So that's where we stand at the moment. We do expect our partnership will continue to adapt to emerging issues, including transition of the COVID pandemic to an endemic state, issues around inflation and cost of living for veterans and military families, and ongoing military fi family child care issues. We do plan on hosting a panel on emerging economic issues impacting veterans and military families at our upcoming meeting. So we look forward to having an active discussion around what you see as emerging issues and collective strategies moving forward. Until then, if you have any questions or thoughts, please feel free to contact me at mark.sullivan at dva.wa.gov.